Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about everyday happiness uh, and five ways to well-being. This uh, is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the project Everyday Happiness and Five Ways to Well-Being. I'm going to talk about our project, the activities that we did, and our ways of uh, solving conflicts. Uh, and I'm going to finish off by telling you about uh, the visit that we had by uh, Her Royal Highness Crown Prince, Princess Mette Marit. Uh, five Ways to Well-Being is a program that was developed in, uh, in England. Uh, it's used with people of all ages and are meant to uh, make their mental health better. Uh, it's used in everyday life, uh, and it's about these ways to connect, to be active, to take notice, and to keep learning and to give. Uh, it's used to make people more satisfied uh, and to pay more attention to each other. The, Nordic, the Norwegian Council of Mental Health has adopted this program. Uh, and they called it Everyday Happiness. Uh, they invited uh, a lot of the kindergartens in Norway to participate in this project, uh, and that's what we did. So, uh, why we chose this project was because we see that kids today experience a lot of stress. They have uh, long hours in daycare. Um, they uh, have a lot of after-school activities, uh, not just themselves, but their older brothers and sisters, and they have to join them and be at matches and training sessions, etc. Uh, as Paul talked about earlier, a lot of uh, kids today experience divorces, which is very stress stressful for young kids. Uh, later in life, uh, they, it's expected that they are going to take an education and they have to have a master's degree, they have to have good jobs, they have to be the perfect mom and dad and they have to uh, be the perfect husband and wife and this all puts a lot of pressure to the kids. We therefore wanted to bring or to give them uh, a foundation of security uh, a security in themselves and in their uh, society. <clears throat> and we also know that not everybody in the world are living with a family that is good enough. A lot of uh, kids have poor home envir environments. So we uh, I don't know if you have read Emily Lundberger. We used this Alfred, Emil's person. We all need an Alfred. We all need someone that sees us for who we are, who believes in us, and who respects us. Uh, and we think that even though uh, the home environment isn't good enough, we can be that one person. And it starts as early as one year old. We have to see the kids, we have to be there for them, and we have to respect them. We want our kids to know that they are good enough just for being who they are. Their value doesn't lie in how much they achieve, uh, but who they are as a person. And if they know that, they can achieve so much more. So this is why we uh, decided to take part in this project, Everyday Happiness. <coughs> and while doing that, we decided that we had to go back and go down to basis. We had to discuss what is it that children today really, really need. And we came to that they need care, they need security, they need to believe in their abilities, and they need closeness. To have everyday happiness 
and to succeed in life. You have to have this foundation. Uh, we believe that kids don't function if they don't experience care. And we believe that they can't learn anything if they don't feel secure. And we really think that they can't achieve anything even when they're young or even when they're older if they don't believe in themselves. And they at least don't achieve any of this if they on some level have not, don't have a kind of closeness to people around them. So from these four terms, our focus became this. This is where happy, everyday happiness comes from. From friendship, from social skills, from feelings, and from playing, from the handling of conflicts, we have our own method of handling conflicts, and I'm going to get to that later. And at least not present adults. I'm going to start with uh, our with present adults because I think that uh, that is the most important thing, both in kindergarten and in school. But if you're going to have uh, a good relationship with the kids. You have to be there, and you have to be present. Uh, we wanted to be close, to help the kids express themselves, and to be there for them, and help them interact with other kids. With the age from one to three, this meant a lot of physical closeness. You had to be there. They need to be touched, they need to be hugged, they need to have a good laugh. Uh, from the age of three to six, this meant more of a mental closeness. You have to be there for them, you have to guide them, and you have to help them connect. To do this, we, for a period of time, put everything else aside. We didn't have any other plans. This was our main goal, to be there. So we sat a lot on the floor. Uh, we played with them, uh, we ob observed them and what their needs were and what they were interested in, and we interacted with them. And we saw that uh, it made them more secure. And I can, for today, uh, we have been, the new kindergarten year in Oslo, in Norway, started the 1st of August. And in my kindergarten, we got about 25 new one-year-olds. One and they are scared. <laughs> so they need us to be down there with them. We also had a lot of focus on friendship. We... Uh, had a main goal, and that was to build good friendships. And we uh, believe that everybody deserves to have a friend, no matter what, at least one. So we divided the groups into smaller groups, about three to four or maybe up to six kids in one group. And we did a lot of playing. Uh, both playing that was guided by the teachers and spontaneous playing. Uh, and we saw that after a while, the kids, they bonded in a way that, it, that was harder for them to do when they were part of a bigger group. Uh, they learned to respect each other and to be considerate. Uh, and we saw that there were a lot of closeness between the kids. These two kids that are giving each other a hug uh, are, no, are now so, so good friends that the other one is sitting waiting outside the door for the other one to come in the morning. 
and they are jumping up and down when they see each other. And they are two, two years old. So it starts early. Uh, they learn to respect each other and they learn to have fun. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about, yeah, and this is just a little picture of what we see as everyday happiness. For the youngest kids, we have uh, trips every week around the neighborhood in our kindergarten. Uh, and this is one of the things that they experience on their way. And the, the youngest kids are, <laughs> you can see it on the picture, they have to be close, they have to be there, they have to touch it. And they were talking about it for weeks uh, afterwards. So it's not so much uh, uh, the things that we plan that makes everyday happiness. It's the spontaneous things that happens every day that you don't even think about. But that really makes a difference for, for your younger kids. So the activities that we did, as mentioned, we had play groups. We had uh, games where cooperation is expected. We sang a lot of songs uh, and read books about feelings and friendships. And we learned about feelings. We did a lot of uh, arts and crafts. Uh, painting was a big part of our project. We painted happy colors and angry colors. And we talked a lot to the, to the kids about what makes you happy and what makes you sad or angry, or whatever feeling was the topic. We saw, uh, uh, yeah. We, as I said, did a lot of arts and crafts. Uh, this is a project that was done by a group uh, with three to six year olds. They built their own city uh, and they had to uh, discuss and compromise on how the city was going to look like, uh, which colors to use, what materials to use, uh, which buildings were going to be in this uh, city. They had to have a, a fire station and a police station in a school, and a kindergarten, and somewhere to live. Uh, and even though this picture shows the finished town, our uh, focus has been on the process and not on the finished product. We want, to, we want the kids to be proud of the process and the way there, and not the, main, uh, and not the goals in itself. Uh, it's in the process that they learn. We had an uh, open stage for kindergarten idols. Uh, and the main goal with this activity was to uh, help them be secure enough about themselves to be able to stand in front of a group and talk about things that matters. They did it in uh, different ways. Some took pictures from home and showed them to the uh, group with their family and friends and dogs and whatever was meaningful to them. And uh, somebody had a real kindergarten idol where, uh, where they came up on stage and they sang a song or they told a joke and, and was experiencing having all the focus put on them. Uh, we worked uh, really hard with a little girl. She went uh, to our kindergarten for five years and she was extremely shy. Uh, so shy that she could sit through a whole meal without eating anything because she didn't dare asking for help to open up her lunch lunchbox. Uh, so uh, we knew that we had to help her be secure enough because when you get into school and later in life, there are situations where you have to be able to speak up in front of other people. Uh, and maybe especially in school where you have projects and you have to present them. 
We worked really hard with her. Uh, she tried first with just an adult or one, one of the teachers and then with a smaller group of kids being on the stage. And then finally she did it on her own. And she finished with standing in front of the whole kindergarten with all the children, all the parents receiving a rose uh, when she was gonna quit kindergarten and start school. So she came a far away and we saw that by encouraging her and uh, helping her believing in herself, uh, it paid off. She was able to. She didn't like it, but she was able to. And she was very proud. Uh, Paul was talking about earlier uh, cutting out faces from uh, magazines. We do the same, but there are one-year-olds and two-year-olds that does it. Uh, and I think uh, this is a good way to show the progress from kindergarten and off to school. We started with feelings, and we, ha we talked a lot about feelings. Uh, uh, and they brought this down to all the activities during the day. The, when they were talking about happiness, they, they brought it down to all the songs, all the fairy tales, all the stories. Uh, that they had, and they also did like this. They put together a lot of magazines, and the kids cut out with a scissor or just tear them out. <laughs> uh, and they put it on a wall, and they talked about it for days. So I think this is like the first step from what Paul was talking about earlier, the progress in uh, knowledge and, and how to learn different things at different levels in life. Um, all the groups worked with uh, the subject feelings. Uh, and as I said, it, they took it down to all of the levels in their daily life. Uh, and um, we saw that it was helping the kids to express themselves and, uh, and to see the difference between, for example, um, sadness and angry. For many kids, that's a different, difficult, uh, two difficult feelings, and it shows in, in made all, sometimes the same way. Uh, so uh, we saw that it helped themselves express themselves to us teachers, but also to each other. Uh, the youngest kids always start the year with me, myself, and my family. As I said earlier, we now have very many one-year-olds in our kindergarten, and we know that this is extremely stressful for the kids, the first period of their life in kindergarten. Their stress level are high, uh, and we want to help them get through this period in the best way possible. And we know then what gives security to small kids are their family. So we, so they all take pictures from home and some of them makes a little house with pictures and hang it on the wall so that the kids can go and see them and talk, touch them and talk to them. Oh my Lord. Uh, and they go to visit everybody's houses. It makes them extremely proud. Uh, this is one of our weekly trips in the neighborhood. Oh. As I t said earlier, with the groups, we are spending a, long, a lot of time uh, playing. Uh, we preschool teachers in Norway uh, are very focused on playing. The kids learn more from playing than we can ever teach them, especially considering social skills. They learn to interact, they learn to wait their turn, they learn to stand up for their, their ideas, and they learn about democracy. They can't always be the one that wins all the fights and, and presents all the ideas. They have to give and take. 
And uh, the most important thing is that they play out their feelings. If they're scared, they can play it out. And through role playing, they, they uh, try out the different roles in society. We see that young kids always, the first thing that they start playing is mom and dad and a young little boy or sister. So it's their way of understanding the world. So when you play a lot, you always are in a lot of conflicts as well. So we have our own way of solving conflicts and it starts with clarifying the problem. And the most important thing he's here is that everybody's supposed to be able to uh, explain their side of the story. There's always two sides. And to ask who, what, and how, but not why. When you have uh, clarified the problem, you m help the children find suggestions to how to solve it. Uh, and then you consider the solutions. Are they fair for all parts, or are one more beneficial than the other? And then you choose one of them. Uh, and after a while, you uh, evaluate and make changes if you have to. The most important thing with this uh, method is to not place blame. And it's uh, a way of uh, giving the kids uh, the opportunity to express themselves and to see all the perspectives. And it also helps the children to see the connection between actions and consequences. And you have to be there as a teacher. You have to guide them through the process. We have uh, gotten feedback from the schools in the neighborhood uh, that they can see which kids are from our kindergarten because of this way of handling conflict. It makes the kids uh, very independent uh, and after doing this for, for some years, they, they rarely need any guidance from the, from the teacher in school. Uh, yes, so uh, to sum up this part, uh, everyday happiness for us is all that I have said now. It starts with the basic, that you need to have care, closeness, the ability to believe in yourself, uh, and friendship. From there, you can have everyday happiness. I'm going to finish off by uh, telling you about the visit we had by Ro Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mette Marit. Uh, it, this project suddenly got a lot bigger when we found out that uh, we're going to have royal uh, visit, a royal visit. Uh, and the kids worked for a long time making this chain of friendship. They all made a little piece each and then they put it together. And there, it was a very proud little girl that was, uh, uh, was uh, giving it to her. Um, and um, we made, uh, or we had a, a gathering with her. Uh, and she told us about how, uh, what was uh, everyday happiness to her and what made her happy. Uh, and she asked them questions, and you can see that they are all, all very eager to answer. Uh, and we made friendship hearts that we decorated with painting and diamonds, and she was doing it all with us, and she was very interested and curious of what the, the children thought of friendship and what was happiness to them. Uh, we finished off by uh, painting our hands around a poem called uh, a, a Ring of Gold. I haven't found a good translation. So <laughs> it's a Norwegian poem about friendship. Uh, and we paint our hands uh, around it because it's a chain of, uh, of hands that are making the ring and it's unbreakable. Uh, after she left, the kids were uh, very uh, uh, happy. This was uh, a very, this was everyday happiness to them, to see a real princess. 
for a lot of the younger girls, especially, was very happiness. And they finished off by being allowed to uh, interview each other. And uh, this is Enarko, the Norwegian uh, television channel. I was here and uh, interviewed them as well. Yep. Any questions? Do we have time for any questions? We have time. Yes, we have time <laughs> for some questions. Okay. Küsimusi. Ja, sinna. Kohe tuleb mikrofon su juurde. <laughs> so, um, your groups in the your kindergarten. Uh, do you have groups uh, with, of different ages or the same ages? Uh, we have uh, seven groups in total, uh, and three of them are in the age of one to three, and four of them are in the age of three to six. Veel küsimusi? Kommentaare? Mika? Then I'll ask in between. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that the, the schools that children go to see the difference. Mm. Um, what kind of basic difference in their behavior you also see in this program opposed uh, to before? We, we see, w at least when we worked uh, a lot with, uh, with feelings, that they, uh, they ha was able to express themselves in a different way that they were before. Uh, they learned to put names on the different feelings and, and they helped each other if they needed. If they saw that uh, one person was sad, they, they comforted and they got help from the teachers if they, if they needed it in a, in a better way than they had did uh, earlier. And we tried to, at least with the youngest kids that didn't have any language yet, uh, we also, also used nonverbal language to express themselves and to say no and stop if they, if they didn't, uh, if they got beaten or bitten or <laughs> the things that small kids do. Veel küsimusi kommentaare. Võib ka eesti keeles küsida, küll see tõlkimine teoks saab. Then I have one more question. Um, it has to be then more difficult for you as a person taking care of the children. What's the main difference now for you as a person dealing with children? Is What do, do you have to do differently? Uh, I think the, mo the, the most, uh, the, the thing that we do now that we don't, didn't do before is that you have always known that care and social skills and all these things are very important in kindergarten but it drowns a little bit in all the other things that we are going to do. You have to teach them this and teach them that, and they, there's a pressure from above that you have to, they are supposed to be at this level and they're supposed to know this and all that. But uh, for us, the focus has been to, to make them as good as people as they can be. Uh, and that's more important at this age than knowing this and this. Because if they don't feel secure and don't have uh, a good relationship and being a good human, they can't learn anything at all later in life. So we have to put a focus on, on the basic uh, needs uh, in a different way that we have done earlier. Uh, we feel that we have accomplished a better uh, environment of learning. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, we have been doing this only for a year now, so, so it's uh, still a little early to see the long-term uh, consequences, uh, but, we, uh, but we are having it with us all, at all times now. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for kind examples and explanation. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much.